Uh, I'm going to give a general overview of uh, what has been going on at SAMC regarding Estrostat program. I'll gi also give you some little bit of background about uh, Estrostat program at SAMC, which started about 10 years ago. Why astrostatistics? As you all know, astronomers encounter a surprising variety of statistical problems in their research, uh, including time series is one aspect uh, of it, and it's a large, a large part of uh, uh, the enterprise. And how to deal with large data, data sets of images, spectra, and various properties of cosmic population observed and em empirically studied. And uh, if you have data from different telescopes, how to combine them using machine learning techniques. And quite a bit of data, special uh, data in 2D, 3D, and also multi-dimensional parameter spaces. Usually, in statistics, we often assume multivariate or multi, which doesn't hold in many cases. Eric and I started this enterprise about 25 years ago. And uh, we wrote a book with the name Astro Statistics and coined that term in 90s. And some statistical procedures are based on mathematical proofs, which determine the applicability of established results. Uh, when you use statistics, you have to be mindful about what are the assumptions behind those things. You cannot blindly use whatever tool that is available. It, statistics, it can start to think of statistics as a toolbox. Uh, you don't want to use uh, pliers to turn a screw, you don't want to use hammer to turn a screw, and you don't use screw, screwdriver to hammer a nail. So you have to be careful what is out there and how you can use it. And scientific inference should not depend on arbitrary choices of methodology. It can be difficult to interpret meaning of statistical result with respect to scientific goal. Uh, if you ask statistician about uh, um, if you want to uh, uh, about whether he, you would like to confirm certain thing or not, he would say probably with 95% confidence, I would say it is true or false, with plus or minus 1% error. So there are so many constraints. So how do you interpret that? That's where domain science is very important. Input from domain science is very important. Let's look at some background. More, and quite a few of statistical concepts were derived due to problems in astronomy. For example, the length of year from discrepant data, uh, how do you estimate it? Well, uh, Hippocrates took the middle range of that as an estimate. And in medieval time, people say that, uh, people used to say that you should take a, uh, one observation and only once, and you should measure it ac accurately. No elements for errors. That's the, essentially what physicists also would say. In 16th and 17th century, Brahe took, used uh, uh, this average as an estimate. And we know that average gives you a better estimate than the single observation because it uh, uh, cancels out a lot of errors. And it, uh, the variability of the mean is much less than single observation. And Galileo's computations had rudiments of the so-called mean absolute deviation method. 
and uh, legendary Laplace Gauss developed least squares regression to find a curve or a line to fit data with various errors. And quite a bit number of astronomers contributed to least squares theory. In the last century, these two fields uh, diverged quite a bit. Uh, statisticians were pulled towards uh, um, biostatistics because of applications in uh, medicine and industrial applications. And during the same period, astronomers recognized the power of modern physics, electromagnetism, thermodynamics, and so on, and they became astrophysicists. So these two fields diverged quite a bit until the uh, middle of uh, last century, people started thinking about uh, using statistics in astronomy. <clears throat> Astro statistics at Samsung. Uh, it started long time ago, not just with this program uh, in last September. Uh, the first program on astro statistics was organized in 2006. Jim Berger was the uh, director of the SAMSI program at that time. Um, he asked me to uh, propose a program on astro statistics and uh, he helped me uh, in writing the proposal and then we started that program. I started with a opening workshop and this was in the initial stages Astronomers and statisticians didn't talk to each other much and uh, they didn't understand each other's language. So what we did was uh, we had uh, some tutorials at that time, uh, basic elementary statistics tutorials for uh, astronomers and elementary statistics, uh, elementary astronomy meant for statisticians so that they could at least understand the language and the concepts. At that time, we had uh, only four working groups, exoplanets, surveys and population studies. Uh, mind you that uh, Kepler didn't exist at that time. Uh, some of the postdocs who, who participated in the exoplanet survey, exo, exoplanet group, had a lot of input from statisticians, and many concepts were trashed out at that time. And so, it's like LSST now. They didn't know what kind of data to expect at that time. So they tried to find, uh, try to find statistical methods to suit various scenarios, whether uh, the uh, orbit is a elliptical or circular, or whether there is a jitter, whether there is a influence from stellar uh, uh, motion, and various other things. And some of the postdocs who participated, astronomy postdocs who participated at that time, now became very much involved in Kepler data analysis. And they say that that uh, SAMSI program at that time was really helpful and they started using those methods developed at that time in their research now after 10 years after that. Gravitational lensing was uh, another program that was the uh, working group. It was uh, led by Arlie Peters, applied mathematician, source detection and feature detection, and particle physics. Uh, it was le uh, led by um, Louis Lyons. I think he's retired now. And it concluded with uh, a transition workshop coinciding with statistical challenges in modern astronomy, a fourth version at Penn State in 2006. Uh, since 1991, we have been organizing uh, 
statistical challenges in modern astronomy to bring statisticians and astronomers together. First one was organized in 1991, and uh, the subsequent ones are organized every five years after that. This was the fourth one. The last one was held last year at uh, CMU for the first time outside Penn State. Again, in 2012, we had a uh, mini program on astrostatistics as a part of a uh, large program in computational methodology for massive data sets. It started with a workshop in September 2012, and there were presentations on uh, search for transients and various missions like uh, Fermi, SDSS, and Planck, I think uh, Ashish was also there at the time, sparsity data mining. The workshops, uh, working groups was mainly, were mainly focusing on discovery and classification synaptic surveys, inference and simulations, stochastic processes, and graphical models. Uh, in summer of uh, 2013, Eric Ford organized a small program, I think it was about three weeks program, on exoplanets, uh, data analysis for Kepler data. Now let's come to the current program at SAMC. We started with the opening workshop in August 2016. Uh, the topics covered during the open workshop were time domain astronomy, exoplanets, pulsar timing, uh, non stationary, non Gaussian irregular samples process. There were several lectures by statisticians on that, and statistical issues in cosmology. And uh, this program is timely because uh, during the planning meeting for ESTRO program in 2015. Many people who were involved in LIGO also attended that meeting, and uh, they found it very difficult to keep, the se keep it secret that they discovered this um, first gravitational wave, and they were not allowed to say anything about it until it was publicly announced in the following January. So we didn't know anything about gravitational wave at the time, but they knew. And that really helped us forming uh, various groups in that. Uh, among other working groups, we started with quite a few, and some are active, some are not that active. One of the biggest one is the time domain, uh, synaptic time domain surveys. Uh, Ashish has already talked about it quite a bit. Multivariate and irregularly sampled time series, which are helpful in uh, gravitational waves. Uncertainty quantification and astrophysical emulation. And astrophysical population, that's where they, they talk about, uh, they discuss about exoplanets and other things. And statistics and uh, computation for cosmology. I'll skip on this one because Ashish has already talked about it. <clears throat> oh. uh, he, Ashish also mentioned about uh, the subgroups we had, uh, several subgroups, uh, data challenges, interpolating time series, and uh, one of the important thing is domain adaptation for classification uh, coming from diverse data sets. Uh, Ricardo Villalta is a computer scientist who is leading this uh, subgroup uh, from Houston. And light curve decomposition, uh, Arima, Efima, uh, I think Eric Fagelson is involved in that. Uh, a major problem in planet detection is stellar variability. How to separate stellar variability with the trans, uh, uh, data on transients, uh, this uh, plant transients. Uh, 
We have a group at Penn State who are working with the Chilean uh, statisticians on, sep on separating stellar variation from planet transients. Uh, they, have been, they have been using what is known as the autoregressive planet search uh, program, and they use that on Hungarian Automated Telescope South network to see where, how well it is working, and they were uh, very happy with the results. Uh, for astronomers, I don't have to say anything about this. Let's skip on this. Yeah. Uh, the data on this, stellar activity and the planets, uh, it's like a hide and seek. Uh, we see trend as well as some kind of periodicity, how to separate it. Uh, and also, noise is very high. So there are lots of statistical issues involved here. Uh, during the IAU meeting in 2015 in um, Hawaii, Suzanne Agreen um, expressed uh, her opinion on exoplanets, and they still may be de detected by exploiting differences in time scales, shape, and wavelength dependence between the planetary and stellar signals. However, vari stellar vari variability combined with residual instrumental system systematics is still limiting the detection of habitable planets by Kepler. A better understanding and ability to mitigate stellar variability continues to be crucial for the continued development of exoplanet studies. Some of the Techniques that are useful here from statistics point of view, and they have been used uh, by Wallman in 2012, independent component analysis, wavelet decomposition by Kepler team pipeline, uh, Jenkins at NASA Ames, Gaussian process regression by Suzanne and her colleagues. Uh, and trend entropy, empirical modeling, etc., by Roberts et al. And other possibilities is to use principal component analysis, autoregressive modeling, various types of autoregressive modeling, moving average modeling, and so on. And periodic search methods include fast Fourier transform of infinite, stationary, evenly spaced Gaussian data, Loom's Kargul, I know that if, uh, astronomers are extremely happy with Loom's Cargill periodogram. They use it with, uh, thousands of times. But I, I should warn you that uh, mathematically there is a issue with that. Uh, in one of the papers by Cargill, he derives uh, a formula using incorrect method. Uh, essentially, it uses so. Uh, sum of squares of normals as a Gaussian. That holds only when you have independence of those two. And that doesn't hold for irregularly spaced data. It holds only for regularly spaced data. So we, uh, astronomers use this very often for irregularly spaced data, and that's the main reason why they use. But one, one has to caution about mathematical validity of that. So one has to look into that. That is a challenge for stati young statisticians like James and others. I am too old to do that. <laughs> if they are independent, they are, if they are not independent, it's not. That's, yes, that is the main issue there. And uh, uh, the place where they use, where Skargul uh, uses, Independence occurs only when you have evenly spaced data. If it is irregularly spaced data, then you don't have independence. One can show that there's a correlation involved. And box least squares method, transient Coombe filters, and so on. There are so many methods. <clears throat> uh, another working group, multivariate and irregularly, uh, working on multivariate and irregularly sample time series. Uh, they are asking questions, how can we maximize the sensitivity of space-based photometric surveys? 
how do we infer planet mass from observational data? Uh, group leaders are Ben Farr and uh, Suman Lahiri. Ben Farr couldn't be here uh, because he's a very young child. Uh, I have been working with uh, uh, Joe Lazio and uh, Demorest on uh, gravitational wave background uh, using pulsar timing. Uh, here we are trying to use partial autocorrelations and multiple correlations to extract the effect of the gravitational wave background. Uh, Domares uh, used Bayesian methods to compute upper limits on the isotropic stochastic gravitational wave background from nine year uh, data set that appeared in 2016. Uncertainty quantification and astrophysical emulation is another uh, working group. And the group leaders are Derek Bingham and Eric L. Lawrence, and this is a very active group. Astrophysical population is another very active group, led by Eric Ford at Penn State and uh, Jesse Chizowski, a statistician from Yale. So some of the most important conclusions, some of the most important scientific problems in astronomy and astrophysics raise challenging issues in statistical methodology. Over the past decade, SAMSIA organization provides a, provided a form where these issues could be pursued by cross-disciplinary teams and of statisticians, astronomers, computer scientists, and so on. And I thank SAMSIA for that. Thank you. Questions, comments? Uh, do you think that there's some set of statistical methods which are uh, particularly necessary for astronomy? Uh, so as a field, astrostatistics, it seems like people are using a lot of different statistical methodology. Is there a particular area within statistics, though, that you think is uh, most critical uh, when doing astrostatistics? One is time series. That's one of the important things. But uh, I cannot uh, say that this is a particular statistical tool that is useful for every astro astronomy, astronomy problem. So the, uh, depending on various issues, for example, multivariate classification is another uh, thing. Um, ARMA modeling, spatial statistics, and computational methods, MCMC is used a lot. Personally, I would like to learn more about uh, domain adaptation. Uh -huh. I'm not sure if somebody else is giving a talk. Ask Ashish. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can. I, maybe we should have uh, uh, asked uh, Ricardo to come here for that. Yeah. We can talk more about it. And yeah. maybe yeah. we can include it. Essentially, what it does is so uh, you have data from different telescopes, so, and uh, there may be a trend in one direction, and there's another trend. How to bring them together so that you can combine the data? That's basically the idea. But. Uh, uh, tools required to do that are all machine learning tools. Yeah. 